we're tackling objective 2.6, configuring basic wired and wireless small office, home office, or SOHO networks. This is all about understanding how our devices get their digital addresses to communicate. Think of an IP address as your device's unique mailing address on a network. To send or receive data, it needs a complete mailing label. This includes the IP address itself, the specific street number, like 192.168.1100, the subnet mask, like a postcode telling your device which local neighborhood or subnet it belongs to, for example, 255.255.255.0, and the default gateway. This is the address of your local router, the main post office your device uses to send data outside its local neighborhood. Let's talk about IPv4, the original internet house numbering system. An IPv4 address is 32 bits long, shown as four decimal numbers separated by dots, like 192.168.1.31. Each number, or octet, is between 0 and 255. With about 4.3 billion possible addresses, we started running out. To help, we have private IPv4 addresses. Think of these like internal apartment numbers within a large building. The whole building might share one main street address, a public IP, to talk to the outside world. But internally, thousands of devices can use private addresses. These are defined in RFC 1918 and are not routed on the public internet. Common ranges include 10.0.0.0 for large networks, 172.16.0.0 to 172.312.55.255 for medium ones, and 192.168.0.0 for many home networks. Public IPv4 addresses, on the other hand, are globally unique and internet routable, allowing direct communication across the internet. To solve the IPv4 address shortage, we have IPv6. IPv6 addresses are 128 bits long, providing a virtually inexhaustible supply. Think 340 undecillion addresses. They look different, written in hexadecimal with colons like FE80, 5D18, 0652, FEFD, 8F52. Because they're so long, we rely heavily on DNS to use names instead. Subnetting is also simpler, often with a slash 64 prefix for the network and the remaining 64 bits for the host. What happens if your device can't find a DHCP server to get an IP address? It might use APIPA, Automatic Private IP Addressing. This is a fallback, like a lost and found address. If your device gets an IP starting with 169.254.xx, that's APIPA. With it, you can only talk to other devices on your immediate local network, not the internet. It's a sign you need to troubleshoot your DHCP setup. Now, how do devices actually get these IP addresses? There are two main methods, static and dynamic. Static IP addressing is like having a permanent, unchanging home address. You can manually type in the IP, subnet mask, and gateway on each device but this is prone to errors and hard to manage on large scale. The better way for static assignment on a network with DHCP is a DHCP reservation. You tell the DHCP server to always give a specific IP address to a specific device based on its MAC address, like a permanent reserved parking spot. This is great for servers, printers or routers. Dynamic IP addressing is the most common for user devices. Your device automatically gets a temporary IP address from a DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, server. It's like checking into a hotel and getting a temporary room number easy and automatic. Understanding these IP addressing fundamentals, IPv4 versus IPv6, public versus private, APIPA, static versus dynamic, and the roles of subnet masks and gateways is absolutely essential for configuring any SOHO network. That's our deep dive into Objective 2.6. Thanks for joining Tech Vault Academy.